Hello, all cinephile Mike, your friendly neighborhood cinephile is here with day 11 of And the Oscar Goes To, my series of shorts on who I believe will win, and in some cases, who should win the big award come Oscar night, March 10th. So we are moving through our process. We have our screenplay. We have our director. We have our designs done. We have our cast. And now we have to shoot this thing. So today we are talking about best cinematography. And the nominees are Edward Lockman for El Conde, Rodrigo Prieto for Killers of the Flower Moon, Matthew Liberty for Maestro, Hoyt von Hoytema for Oppenheimer, and Robbie Ryan for Poor Things. As is our custom, let's look at these one at a time. So Edward Lockman captures the story of our Chilean vampire in stunning black and white imaging sweeping shots of the home of the family that lives in the outskirts of Santiago, as well as shots of the city itself are brought together in almost photographic shots. Bright enough to illuminate everything, some of the vicious kill scenes are almost more vivid than if they had actually been done in color. Then Rodrigo Prieto fills the screen with sweeping shots of the Osage nation and using some incredible overhead shots at the end that almost look like Osage symbols. He frames intimate scenes in vast settings and makes the most isolating sets where action is contained feel open and wide. The use of the natural lighting effects used throughout the film doesn't even feel theatrical, but almost like you're watching a real documentary as the story unfolds. Then we have Matthew Libatik, who also used black and white, but also color, to tell the different elements of Bernstein's story, the earlier times in black and white and the more present times done in color, reminiscent of the times of which the films he worked when we went from black and white films to color. Also, he incorporates different aspect ratios, full and widescreen to accentuate the action in the story based the time which it takes place. And we have Hoyt Van Hoytema, who also, like in Maestro, incorporates color and black and white to tell the 40-year sprawling history of the atomic bomb creation, using black and white to tell objective elements of the story versus color to underscore the subjective elements in the story, all work together to weave facts from assumption as we follow Oppenheimer's journey, to say nothing of the glorious shots of the effects of the Manhattan Project itself. And finally, we have Robbie Ryan, who also, like the last two, uses a combination of black and white and color, with the shift coming from when our protagonist, Bella, goes from her sheltered existence in black and white to going out and exploring the world in all of its vivid colors. Additionally, the various camera angles that he created for this print present sometimes an almost telescopic view of certain events happening like you are a voyeur into what is happening and shouldn't even be there like you're looking through a keyhole. Now for me, I'm gonna leave this graphic up there because I do feel that Ryan should win for poor things. This film of the five seemed to be the most experimental one of the batch in how these fantastical settings were captured and gave you know a unique way to view a film. However, and it should be said because of also the incredible use of the IMAX lenses to capture not just the sweeping Los Alamos landscape, or the intensity of the hearing scenes, especially that boom of the Manhattan Project, it seems then Van Hoytema, apologies, will be walking up to collect that golden statue. Also helping him, he has pretty much swept that award this whole season. So there you have it. Now that the film is made, we're going to go into post-production, and we will start with the effects and the sounds and all of those other awards coming up. Until then, however, this is Cinephile Mike saying take a break and watch something new.